Hello and welcome to a new video. I'm Lukas from Filmomat and today we will have a closer look at these two devices, the 135 and 120 auto carrier. The auto carrier is a system for automatic camera scanning. So basically it's a device that transports the film. Uh, it has an integrated light source that illuminates the film from below. It has a mechanism that presses down the film for each frame. So it's completely flat, so you get a sharp exposure. And you can connect your digital camera to the auto carrier. So for each frame, the camera will be triggered automatically. In this video, I will show you how you use these devices to scan your film. I will show you what equipment you need and how you set everything up. So without further ado, let's get started. For maximum stability, I am using our Pro Camera Stand to hold all the equipment in place. A camera can be mounted easily using a Arca Swiss compatible mount. The Pro Stand allows precise adjustments in height and also has a 3D leveling head to easily get your camera leveled. The precise height adjustments allow you to achieve perfect focus every time. It is available in two sizes depending on your camera setup and the film format. The lens I am using is a Laowa 100mm macro lens, which offers a wide magnification range. I am using the lens at f8 for maximum sharpness. I set the camera to aperture priority and ISO 200, which usually results in shutter speeds of around 100th to 200th of a second. The camera is connected to my computer. On the computer I have two pieces of software. One is the Nikon Tether software that essentially transfers my RAW files from the Nikon to the computer. And then I have the Smart Convert software, which will take these RAW files and automatically convert them into a positive image. For the Smart Convert software, I also have this custom keyboard here and that allows me to do all the adjustments in the software more or less without using the mouse at all. The auto carrier includes a control panel. You can select between three operating modes, manual, semi and auto mode. You can control the light source and manually activate the pressure plate system. The film advance wheel allows you to move the film through the carrier. A lot of engineering went into this film advance wheel because it allows you to move the film really fast, but also allows you to make very small and fine adjustments. It gives you a exceptional haptic feedback and uh, yeah, just a lot of fun playing around with that. So a typical workflow now would be that I take the control wheel I move to the first image, then I press the button, the auto carrier presses down the film so it's flat, the camera gets triggered automatically, the file gets transferred to the computer and a few seconds later I already have the positive inverted file on my screen. Then I can go to the next image, press the button, camera gets released, file gets imported, and a few seconds later, I have the positive image. In semi mode, the auto carrier memorizes the distance between the first and second frame. After each following exposure, it automatically advances the film by the memorized distance. This allows you to very quickly move through a roll of film with only minor adjustments needed for each frame. Probably the most interesting mode is of course the auto mode. When you insert the film strip, the first frame is automatically positioned. It's very important that the left edge of the frame is flush with the left edge of the film gate. Once the first frame is aligned correctly, the auto mode is started by pressing the red button on the control panel. In auto mode, every frame is actively detected by a frame sensor and the frames are positioned precisely within the film gate. Using the speed dial, you can adjust the speed as needed. The images are directly tethered to the computer and Smart Convert is importing and converting them automatically in just a few seconds. For 
For the 120 auto carrier, the auto mode procedure is exactly the same. The only difference is that you have to select the correct film format that you are scanning on the control panel. Now that all images are imported into Smart Convert, we can take a closer look at how you can post-process the images with Smart Convert. As briefly shown before, I have the Smart Convert control keyboard. So this is a keyboard that was specifically designed for that software um, and it just makes the usage of this software a lot easier. For example, you can use these buttons here to navigate through the images. You can use these keys here to rotate the image. You can adjust the density, which is essentially the brightness. You can adjust contrast, saturation, and um, of course also the color balance. Usually the workflow that I am doing when I process the images is that I select one of these images, I go to edit crop, and the first thing I do is I adjust the crop for this image. As these were 35 millimeter frames, I can select a aspect ratio here of two to three, and then I can take these handles here to crop the image. As you can see, it's a little bit tilted, so I can use this lever here to slightly tilt the image, adjust the crop. That's looking good. Then I just hit enter, and now I have a very nice crop. I will slightly increase the brightness here, add a little bit of contrast. All right. Now that I have set these basic settings, so I crop the image, I set the density, I adjusted the contrast, what I can now do is click Command C, which will open up this window here, and I can now select settings that I would like to copy. Um, in this case, I would like to copy the manual crop, the density, and the contrast. When I click Copy, these settings are now copied, and now I can select Command A to select all the images that I scanned. And if I now press Command V, these uh, settings that I just copied are now pasted to all the um, other images here. And because the auto carrier is really good at precisely positioning each frame, um, the crop for all these images is now very good already. So if you browse through here, everything is nicely cropped. I can rotate the images wherever it's needed. And of course I can now do minor adjustments. For example, I want to have this a little bit darker or a little bit brighter and so on. One nice thing about Smart Convert is that it's very intuitive to set the color balance. So there are basically three ways of doing that. Either you select Auto White Balance, that basically is the default that you are presented. Um, you can also, of course, use these manual color balancing keys. For example, if I think this is a little bit too magenta, I can um, add a little bit of green or a little bit of yellow and now it's already looking a little bit better. What you can also do, and this is something I particularly like here, you can just click at any point in the image to set the white balance to that specific spot. For example, if I set the white balance here to this gray stone area, you can see the color changes a bit. If I click here on the green grass, Obviously that will mess up the white balance, but usually what I do, I just try finding some sort of neutral gray area in the image. Just click around a little bit until I am satisfied with the result. And if not, I can always just add a little bit of manual input to adjust the colors. And of course, I can now again use Command C, copy these color values and for example paste them here into this image and now I have the same color balance here as I had here. And this is particularly useful if you have difficult image, uh, images that are difficult to grade 
um, because you can just copy the settings from a other image to this particular image. Once you're done editing all your images, you can either select a selection. So for example, I just want to select this image, then I will ex uh, click export selection. I also can just select a few images. What I also can do is if you have shots that are just um, not good, you can click skip image and then it will be skipped during export. And when you're done, you can just click export all. You can specify some sort of folder. I will just call it test, test images. And then you can select whether you want to export TIFFs or JPEGs. Usually I just export JPEGs because TIFFs are really massive at this high resolution. If you want, you can even downsize the images so you can enter a uh, pixel value here and then all the images will be downscaled to that value. But in this case here, I just want to export them at full resolution as JPEGs. I click OK. And now I can go here into my images. And I have all the images here. There's one thing I haven't talked about so far and that is this little IR which is written on both of these auto carriers. So what is that about? Some of you might be familiar with the term digital eyes. Um, that's a technology that some film scanners offer to automatically detect and remove dust from film scans. And this is done by using infrared light. So how does it work? Well, the underlying principle is that color film or specifically the uh, color dyes inside the color film are transparent for infrared light. So basically if you would take a infrared image of a color film like this you would see nothing. It just would be a, a blank image. However if there are small dust particles on the image then these dust particles block the infrared light so essentially what you get in the infrared image is a image of the dust on the film. And this is pretty useful because you can use this dust image to automatically remove the dust particles from the visible light image. To use this IR scanning system you need a so-called full spectrum camera. That's a camera which is sensitive to the full spectrum of light. Standard cameras block IR light and cannot be used. Here I am using a modified Nikon Z7 camera. Additionally, you also need a special lens, which is optimized for the infrared range. Please visit filmomat.eu for more information about this setup. In IR mode, the autocarrier makes two exposures of the same frame. One with visible light and another one with IR light. The IR light is not visible with the naked eye, but you can see how the full spectrum camera is recording the image. Smart Convert is then using these image pairs to create one dust-free image. In the side-by-side -side comparison, the difference between the standard image and the IR corrected image stands out strongly. Even the tiniest dust particles are completely gone. We are now at the end of this video. I really hope that I could bring you a little bit closer to the auto carrier scanning system and that you have a better understanding now of the workflow and the capabilities of the auto carrier. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the system and if you have any questions left. Thank you a lot for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video and see you in the next one. Bye.